What's going on guys, it's Salvaje, I'm back with another Fortnite Save the World video, and in this video I'm going to be breaking down why Constructors are the best subclass when it comes down to defensive type modes. I'm going to also be breaking down the loadouts that I like using with Constructors when it comes down to weapons, and also when it comes down to the hero loadouts. And this video should give you a general understanding of how you can also maximize your constructor play. So as an endgame player, and even as a Canny Valley player, you're going to be able to save a lot of matches that were supposed to be complete failures because of a stupid mistake that a teammate might have done. In the gameplay that you guys are seeing in the background, my teammate shoots down the balloon very early and retrieve the data. And we don't have any trap tunnels placed at all whatsoever. This was a high level mission, which basically meant that since we didn't have any trap tunnels placed, there was a high, high chance of losing the mission. But we didn't lose the mission. The reason why we didn't lose is because, of course, I had a really great constructor hero loadouts. I was maximizing my constructor. And of course, we also had another constructor in our team. So let's talk about the constructor that I'm going to be using. And that's going to be the homie Mega Base Kyle. Now, I just want to point out, if you don't have Mega, Mega Base Kyle, that's completely okay. You can use people like Heavy Base Kyle. You can use constructors like Ice King. And, of course, Heavy Base Kyle, he's one of the best constructors in the entire game. So, I definitely believe that you should be working towards getting him as fast as possible. Either from a llama, or of course, by manually recruiting him from the collection book. If you're within Canny Valley and above, and you have a pretty decent amount of training manuals, right? Anyways, the point is, if you don't have Heavy Base Kyle, it's okay. It's not a big deal, but Heavy Base Kyle is going to be one of the most powerful constructors in your arsenal if you want to be sort of like the guy that carries those defensive type missions. I want to go over my loadouts, and then I'm going to start breaking down the gameplay on why is it that I was able to do really, really well on this mission, and why we were able to come out on top. So like I said, my teammates just shut down the balloon very early and we didn't really build any trap tunnels at all throughout the course of this entire gameplay. But that didn't really matter. Why? Because I was playing Mega Base Kyle and I had massive base coverage. And if you don't know what base coverage is, you need to check out my base explained video in the quick tips playlist in the description. I also had supercharged traps, which means that any traps within base coverage were going to be doing increased damage, but we didn't really lay down any traps, so that was kind of a waste of a team perk. But it didn't really matter. And the reason for that is, is because I had a really good support team that was going to be complementing the objective defense really, really well. I had base Kyle, which is part of the base game, and he's going to be increasing the health of my uh, structures. So every single structure within base coverage was going to be getting 28% extra health. Basically what this means is every time we were overwhelmed by all of the husks that were in our base, we didn't really have to worry about it too much. And the reason for that is it's because the husks were just hitting structures that had way more health. And since they had way more health, of course, that means we had more time to actually uh, eliminate the husks before they became a really big threat. I also had, of course, uh, electrified floors, and since I had massive base coverage, that means that I was able to uh, put a lot of floors down and uh, have a lot of electrified floor damage to every single husk that comes within our base range, and basically that means less damage than me and my teammates have to do to, of course, all of the husks that are attacking our base. Electrified floors is really helpful, and you can buy Thunder Thora from the item shop right now, so definitely make sure that you get your hands on her. I had the homie heavy base Kyle. And you guys are going to see in the gameplay that sometimes my objective, right, was being really, really overwhelmed. But every 30 eliminations, and, and this is something that's going to happen very often on the defensive type modes, right? Because you're going to be getting eliminations, like, really, really quickly. Every 30 eliminations, my base is going to be uh, sort of uh, emitting an explosion that's going to be doing 39, 39 uh, base energy damage within a 3 tile range. Long story short, a lot of damage. Not even flex tape can fix that damage and since I have my base around the objective when the husk were getting close to the objective and when they were getting really overwhelming in the objective my field of base ability very often was able to eliminate a lot of husk or were able to push husk back which basically gave me the opportunity to sort of eliminate the husk a little bit quicker. I also had Frozen Castle uh, that Ice King provides and basically this meant that the husk were going to be moving slower. And I also had base MD because I wanted to experiment a little bit. I just wanted my health to sort of, um, 
you know be increasing as time passes not really have to worry about too much health but i could easily have put in uh the homie uh what's this guy's name uh yeah power power base knock so that my structures get healed for four percent of their max health every 10 seconds and that was of course definitely gonna help out but I actually really like that I went with uh, the homie uh, Ward and Kyle because that extra health that my teammates were getting was definitely helping them out when it came down to their survivability. Anyway, since I had Lofty Architecture, Electrified Floors, Flo Frozen Castle, and Field of Base, this basically meant that my objective was not going to be compromised. My objective wasn't going to be overwhelmed by Husk because my base was going to be helping out the team overall with many many uses like i said more damage i mean more uh health to the structures electrified floors which means less damage my teammates have to do feel the base which is something that's going to push the husk away from the base and eliminate the husk if they're uh, around the base and frozen castle which basically gives us more time to eliminate the husk that's why constructors are really really powerful at the defensive type modes right because they're able to sort of add utility that other heroes can't really add like outlanders or soldiers or ninjas for example heroes that basically specialize on doing damage or just um you know throwing a lot of gadgets that can bring some utility to the table etc etc and that's why constructors are really really important again as you guys are going to be seeing throughout this entire gameplay you know, my objective was just overwhelmed so many times, but I was able to come out on top. And the reason why I was able to come out on top is because of how much utility my base was giving me. As you guys know, in Fortnite Save the World, I take utility really, really seriously. Sometimes people like to focus on the damage that a weapon does or the damage that a kit is able to provide. But damage doesn't really mean shit if your objective is gone. And that's why I think more people should be playing Constructors. Because if it wasn't for my Mega Base Cal loadout, and if it wasn't for the other Constructor that I had on my team, this mission would have been a complete failure. Any experienced Save the World players know, a level 138 mission with teammates that aren't able to eliminate Husk very quickly, uh, without any trap tunnels, it's pretty much a guaranteed loss. Unless, of course, you have players that are really, really good at doing their job. For the, for the gadgets, I have a slow field. And the reason why I run slow field with this constructor loadouts is because if the husk are overwhelming uh, the base from a specific area, or I have a specific choke point that has a lot of husk, as you guys are going to be seeing in the gameplay, I just drop the slow field and I am able to do massive amounts of damage to the husk. And of course, I also have Adrenaline Rush because it's definitely all about the survivability and reviving teammates, etc, etc. If you guys, if you guys uh, pay uh, very close attention to how I'm playing throughout this match is I'm always around the base. And this is also another key part of playing Constructor. When you're playing Constructor, you want to stay alive, right? In a way, you're kind of like the defense, the last line of defense that the objective sort of has. So as I'm playing Constructor, I always make sure that I have some sort of cover that I'm kind of weaving around like my objective, taking cover behind staircases, just trying to be alive as much as possible. And the reason for that is because sometimes I'm also going to have to be the guy that's going to have to be reviving the Outlanders or the Ninjas, for example, when they get uh, really, really aggressively. So that's a really good key tip that I have for you guys if you guys are going to be playing Constructor. But now that I covered those tips, let's move on forward to one of the most effective things to do as a Constructor in Fortnite Save the World. And that is, of course, having a really good loadout. I would probably say that the best class for defensive type modes a couple of months back was the Ninja, because the power of Paleo Luna and the power of anti Kurosera was just god tier. You could just eliminate Husk super, super easily. But now in Fortnite Save the World, we've gotten a lot of weapons that are actually really good at providing a lot of value and providing protection to the objective. And basically that means that constructors are now able to sort of have more freedom when it comes down to how powerful uh, they can be, right? So this is the loadout that I went with throughout the match. I had the bundle bus in my primary slot. And this was, you know, the bundle bus is just going to be like a... Uh, like an assault rifle that's just going to be doing concentrated damage. So I'm going to be taking out lobbers with this thing. I'm going to be taking out, uh, you know, targets that are really, really far away. Like, for example, a blaster. But you don't really need the bundle bus, right? And if you want a weapon that's going to be providing a lot of value as a constructor in the primary slot, 
you can easily get the Hunter Killer, which is part of the base game and can be found in the collection book. The secondary weapon that I had is the Pulsar 9000, and I have to say that a constructive without a Pulsar 9000 isn't really going to be as effective. I'm sorry if you don't have the Pulsar 9000, it's a shame, but this weapon is a really good weapon, and there's a substitute, by the way, for the Pulsar 9000, which I'm about to get into really soon. But the Pulsar 9000, as you guys are going to be seeing in the gameplay, I'm using it as a tool to keep Husk away from the objective, right? As you guys are seeing in the gameplay, every time I'm shooting my Pulsar 9000 is to a lot of crowds of Husk. I'm not going to be shooting my Pulsar 9000 to one type of target, unless the target is very, very dangerous, of course, like a Blaster, etc, etc. The Pulsar 9000 is one of the weapons that makes the Constructor a really, really good top tier uh, choice for the high-end defensive type missions. And then, of course, the third weapon that I was using is the Woofer, or the Woffer, whatever you want to call it. This is the brand new shotgun that we got as part of the Boombox weapon set. Uh, I, like I said on my review, critical rating, double crit damage, reload speed, and this thing is just a monster. The Woofer is able to provide high amounts of damage, and it's really good for AoE as well. So if you don't have the Pulsar 9000, the Woofer is going to be your next best choice. But as you guys are seeing in the gameplay in the background, I like to use the Pulsar 9000 for medium range type combat. And when I'm about to get really, really overwhelmed, or when I see that there's a lot of Husky Husks that are being annoying, I like to pull out the Woofer and pretty much just eliminate those high priority targets. The last uh, key part that I want to uh, talk about when it comes down to constructors and why they're really, really good uh, at, at defensive type modes is the value that you can get with trap tunnels. Trap tunnels are really, really important at the end game levels of play in Fortnite Save the World. Trap tunnels, as you know, if you combine them with the base, uh, you know, for example, if I put my base on top of a trap tunnel, that has a uh, you know a lot of gas traps for example if i have the supercharged traps team perk my gas traps are going to be doing more damage but not only that electrified floors is also going to be kicking in which is going to be damaging the husk over time feel the base is also going to be kicking in which every 30 eliminations again we're going to be emitting a really powerful energy wave with our base that's going to be doing a lot of damage and we also have frozen castle which is going to make the husk take even more damage from the gas traps and all of the other uh, traps that we have within the trap tunnel so that's why constructors are really really good at defensive type modes as well because you can build a constructor that maximizes on trap tunnels and the husk are almost never going to get to the objective but even if they do get to the objective you can always replace your base uh, close to the objective that's something that I don't really see a lot of constructors doing right as a constructor, you guys need to understand that your base doesn't have to be in one spot for the entire match. And as you guys are going to be seeing throughout the gameplay, sometimes I change the position of my base because I want to put it in an area that's going to sort of benefit, um, you know, sort of both spawns and be able to have like the perks on both sides of the spawn if you guys get what I mean, right? So that's another reason why constructors are really good at defensive type modes. The value that the trap tunnel provides is just really good and I'm going to have an in-depth video on trap tunnels very very soon in about a month or so so be on the lookout for it and last but not least another really powerful aspect that constructors brings to the table is defenders because let's face it constructors aren't your super crazy top crazy damage dealers right they're going to need a little bit of help and that's okay that's where defender pads come in you're going to be placing your defender pads you're going to be putting a sniper defender with the obliterator which is now part of the base game and you're going to have that little bit of extra damage that is going to be of course helping the objective and of course if you build a defender pad very close to the objective that defender pad is also going to have the extra uh, protection that your base brings in such as damage resistance and increased building health thanks to lofty architecture that base cal is going to be bringing into the field so why play constructors in fortnite save the world well have you not been paying attention to this video like i just gave you a lot of reasons look it's easily this class is easily hands down one of the best classes in the game when it comes down to defensive type modes and it's really underrated because it does it's not really very action like but i can absolutely guarantee you guys that constructors are very very powerful if you know how to use them and this video of course gave you a really deep breakdown of how you can actually use them if you want to find out how to maximize all of the abilities for constructors check out my 25 constructor tips video it's going to be in the description of this video and uh if you guys want more quality save the world content feel free to subscribe to the survive cartel peace out